Yo, what is going on YouTube and welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today I have a special video. We are gonna do a mini season. Literally, just the races that were already in the current Formula 1 calendar until this date. So from the beginning of the year until Silverstone as Mick Schumacher and we are attempting a road to points. Well, we're not gonna end it with just points. We're gonna do all of the races. It's gonna be a one-shot quali and a free lap race with the default setup. Usually the presets, um, changing that a bit up. But we got out qualified massively in the first race. Still ahead of Latifi. <laughs> um, actually, I think after this race we are not gonna qualify anymore. I'm not sure. We're sending it down the inside of so many cars. Already putting it into P11, P12. So we are close to the point scoring position already. Of course, Barre in turn one, you can always send it on the AI. Um, and we are also gonna try and get ahead of Norris and even Valtteri Bottas into turn four. And we are having the inside for the S section, but Valtteri is still there. Now he's giving up the position. We are already into P10. So one point is already close to us. And we are making a move on our teammate, Kevin Magnussen into P9 and now focusing on getting it done getting closer to the Mercedes ahead of us Russell and Hamilton and we can see at the end of lap 1 these cars are actually fighting I think it's Ocon and Hamilton and that's helping us out a lot we are already struggling on the ERS of course it's on realistic car performance and yeah <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do as, as a horse to score points if you don't have a really fast setup against this AI so Hamilton got actually overtaken by both Ocon and Russell. I don't know if he even was that of Ocon. I think he was fighting. But this enabled us to get a good run on him into turn 4. And we are also taking this opportunity. He has a small lockup. We could see that a little bit of smoke coming from his front right tire, I believe. And now also Ocon and Russell are still fighting it out. So there's another opportunity coming into the hairpin of the middle sector. And we are also taking this opportunity up into P6 we go. But this is not over yet. Russell has a better drive. We are breaking early, making a switch back into the next hairpin. The tricky turn 10, not really hairpin, it's probably the most difficult corner. And with this, it's also staying like that. We, we couldn't make a move on Ocon. Ocon was actually pulling away and Russell actually tries in the final lap to make a move on us. But it's not enough. And so we are taking P6 in our first race against the 110 AI as Mick Schumacher. So points are already there in our first race. Let's see how we get on on the other tracks. So, okay, on this track I was still trying to qualify on Jeddah. And we actually started off well until we hit the wall. I'm not sure if we got damage from that. It was a small impact, so I don't believe we did get any damage. If we did, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because we slowed down massively. From this contact here onwards, we just dropped, like, immediately. We were P10, now we are P19, uh, so yeah, again ahead of Latifi in P19, after this quali I think this is where I decided to just start from the back of the grid, save some time, make it even a bit more difficult. And let's see what we can do in Jeddah. Lap 1, always important to get it right, using the outside, which then becomes the inside for the right-hander, we make up actually quite some ground, moving up into P16. Vettel is still there, we're squeezing in a bit to the inside, so he's compromised in his racing line. We're taking the position and now already focusing on the cars ahead, which are also fighting, so we can still see the point scorers ahead of us. And we're trying to make a move on Norris, just trying to mess up his line, which works out, but we, we make contact and that slows us down big time. We check also if we have any damage from that incident and we do not, fortunately. So still alongside Norris. But he gets the move done and we have to wait a little bit longer to make a move on him and see if we can get closer to the points. And Magnus and Albon actually slow him down so we take the inside for this here, squeeze him onto the curb so he gets the worst exit. With that we are moving ahead of Lando Norris and Albon is taking the outside, Magnus is opening the inside and we make a double overtake on the straight. And we are up into P13. After lap 1. From P19 into P13, I'm sorry, little spelling mistake again. And now 
ahead of us, Tsunoda and Ricardo are also enabling us to catch up again, otherwise we probably wouldn't have been close to them. They're fighting into turn 1 and 2, with that we could at least close the gap. Albon behind us, 1.7 seconds. And we can see that the, the points are not that far away from us, but we make a move on Tsunoda and he just turns in. Of course it was a late uh, overtaking maneuver, but he still just turned in. We were already there. I was surprised. It, it's another like incident where they, I just turned in. And now we are final lap, lap 3 of 3. We can see the points are so close. We definitely have a shot here. We definitely could score points, but we are low on ERS. We're trying to get a move done on Ricardo. We actually get it done. But that's about it. The cars could pull away. We have literally no battery left at the end of the lap. And we're just trying to hold on to P11, which is not enough for a point scoring position. But in three laps with the default setup, this was still acceptable. Unfortunate, but is what it is. And you can see here, we just skipped to the race. And I noticed I did that twice here and on Imola. And it just messes up the grid. On Imola, I think KMX started from pole, which made no sense. So if you just skip the one shot, the grid will kind of be random and you will be at the back of the grid. The Mercedes shouldn't be here, right? So after these two races, I just went to the one shot, retired and then immediately went to the race. Which messed up a bit of the standings, but it was still alright. We still had some good racing action. You can see again, we're making a late, way too late send actually on Ocon, but we need to make these moves stick. We get a bit squeezed and it's not going exactly how we want it. So we also make some progress here by still sending it on Ocon into this fast right hander, the change section of Australia. And we can see still there is an opportunity. Even though we were fighting and losing time, these cars are slowing down each other big time. So we can score points. P10, our teammate, is right ahead. But Sonoda is fighting Stroll because we are trying the outside. And now we get the inside for the next corner. We actually squeeze past. Yuki Tsunoda taking all of our battery power to get ahead of Stroll, but it wasn't enough to take the racing line, so we make a bit of contact, my bad, with that messing up our line. He can make us able to pull away, but we still stick close, and I actually lose it on the curb. And then I decide, you know, it's three laps of race. My bad, we're just gonna retire from the session and continue with the next race, which was then Imola. Great track, really love the circuit. And you can see here again, Landon Norris, Russell, it's all messed up. And you can see at the top of the minimap, it's my teammate, KMAC and P1. Makes no sense. Yeah. So we are not doing this anymore. He actually um, got a good position at the end of this race. And we're trying to squeeze, uh, to squeeze, to squeeze past the AI. We also managed to do that. We know Imola is quite messy all the time. It's really tight and everyone's trying to make a move. Look how they slow down this whole train. Trying the outside of Norris, but we, we just run out of grip. And then we are taking the inside here. And he's also just turning in on us, similar to Tsunoda in the final corner of Jeddah. It's one of those corners where you just have to be alongside way earlier. We make another move on the TV into Aqua Minerali. It was a good move. And um, for this lap, we still take Sebastian Vettel. Not the best progress for a free lap race. In a Haas, we, we usually would like to be higher up already. And as you can see, KMAC was the fastest lap time because he's in P1. Um, Points are still doable, but we can see the point runners are running away from us. And now again, Stroll is making a move on Tsunoda here, the opposite as to the other race in Australia. We're just, we are just not making any sort of progress that we need to make. And they are all slowing each other down, even more and more and more. We are running out of battery, we are running out of time. And this track is anyways tricky to overtake. We squeeze Stroll off the track, unfortunately, but we just had to, to make progress. Then we take the inside into turn one of Yuki Tsunoda. And actually someone is running wide, so it wasn't yet over completely. You see P11 ahead of P10, P9. Maybe if there's some racing going on, we could get a point. But unfortunately, we don't have any luck this time. And the KMA actually finished P2, so checking out the standings, he's in P7 with uh, 23 points. We had 8, I think, at the time. I think without the bad luck that we had and, um, well, this quali bug, well, not really bug, that it's random grid in some way aside from us, I think it would have probably worked out a bit better and we would have been closer to KMAC. 
uh, at this point in time. And now a wet race in Miami. Maybe there's an opportunity to score points here. Also, I just want to say, yes, I wanted to also show Monaco, but at this moment in time, we are not allowed yet to show Monaco because some sponsors are not correct yet and Codemasters asked us to not show any Monaco footage. So I will respect that, obviously. Um, so we will see all tracks until this date, which have been on the current calendar. So until Silverstone in the correct order, but we are going to skip Monaco. And as you can see, there's a sausage curb here on the inside. They added that into the game after the second hand preview, I think. I'm not sure if it was already there on the second hand, but definitely now you can see there's a sausage curb right here on the right hander and a bollard as well. And we're making a move on Bottas. We're faking going down the outside and making a switch back. Great traction. And with that, we get the move done. But I think actually Bottas and Magnussen are fighting and we, we see the red arrows appear. We are a bit scared of that. And again, just P11 missing out on points. Uh, usually, you can see the frustration in my face. I couldn't believe it. Like every single race, more or less the same thing. Our best race was still the first one in Bahrain with P6. I, I actually thought, okay, maybe we are going to score every single race at least a few points. But um, ever since then, it, it, it turned a bit dark in our road to points as Mick Schumacher mini season. And we actually get hit into turn one. Another wet race here in Spain after Miami. So there's maybe another opportunity to get some important points for this short season. Also, if you want to see more of these mini seasons, maybe as a different driver, maybe as Go TV or something else. Um, also, maybe less races, but longer, uh, like longer races, like five lap races, but something like that. Maybe one shot quality and five lap races and five races instead of like ten or nine with three lap races. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see. I think it would be quite cool and then we do a move on our teammate into the chicane up into P14 in the first lap. Decent progress but from here on we all know Spain. It's just a track where you can't really overtake especially in the wets now. So another missed out opportunity, no points for us. Um, also if you enjoyed this video give it a like, subscribe and hit the bell because there will be more con content coming. Daily uploads from now on, as long as I can, especially during the Silverstone week, because I already pre-recorded everything. You can see we make big progress here, we really need to make sure we get those important positions at the beginning when everyone squeezed together, because it will make it so much easier to maybe pick up one or two points at the end of the race. And we just, that was really difficult, like we could have ended in tears here, this whole situation. We just squeezed through Vettel and Albon and now we are making a move on Norris and Magnussen and the points are literally right ahead of us again there is a great opportunity and if we get a good exit we might be able to send a move on Yuki Tsunoda and so we do actually heartbreaking into the right hander before the castle section now moving at the beginning of lap 2 Gasly and Bottas are fighting it out with that slowing each other down and into turn 3 we are thinking about taking the inside of both of them so 3 wide really tight and we make it stick so up into P9 that could be 2 points but Bottas actually nearly kills us going into turn 2 on the final lap we don't have DRS <laughs> we have a Gasly on the inside he's getting blocked by Bottas Bottas with DRS Tsunoda with DRS we don't know what we are gonna do here we just have to make sure we are not crashing out because there's a point that we can pick up or maybe two and we are also going to do it so we're sending it down on Bottas and now it will be difficult to stick with Tsunoda and he's also pulling away but we make sure we get another point so the second point we score this season is in Baku at least P10 two races to go in Canada and in Silverstone and now we're getting a decent start for the Canadian GP sending it into turn one making a bit of contact with Sepp. Then the outside is actually so easy to overtake other cars. Look how much progress we make here. Two cars on the inside. Guan Yu and Albon. Getting past Guan Yu and again, everyone's just stacking up behind each other. We make a move on Danny Ricardo and Lance Straw. Already again into P14. Usually P14 is kind of where we always are during that one. 
and then we have to make sure we, we pick up the battles and get some good points. Aside from Bahrain, we made up insane progress already in turn one. It's crazy because of that heavy braking zone and long straight before actually having to brake. We make contact with Lando Norris while it's passing Bottas. And this is gonna become the sketchiest moment you will ever see into the chicane. We tried to make it free wide, it definitely does not work. Don't ever try it. But we, we went past both Norris and Sonoda free wide. And with that, no points again. You can see I don't... I, I really don't like it. <laughs> P11 is kind of where we always finish. I, I really feel like a Mick right now. <laughs> it's always close to points, but it's not, not happening all the time. Silverstone. Now, similar to Bahrain, you can make up a lot of positions into the first breaking zone because you accelerate quite quite some time. And we just squeeze past Tsunoda and we have four wide right now into turn four. And we actually make a move on both Bottas and Tsunoda. And now, maybe at the end of the first sector, we can still make a move on Land on Oris. This is the final race, so we need to make sure we score as much points as possible make progress where we can to not lose out too much time and there we can see they are fighting again our teammate and Guan Yu trying to make it three wide now and actually we are thinking better of it which is taking our time now into the first breaking zone again squeezing past both into P10 and with that actually the race is kind of over because you can see the distance to the others and we are not going to catch it up unfortunately but there you can see another point two points in Canada and Silverstone and then big points in Bahrain this is the end of the championship I hope you liked this video if you want to see more of these mini seasons let me know and we are going to do it also suggestions are happily accepted so I will see you in the next video take care everyone you're Marcel peace